I believe they did not achieve this overnight. It took a lot of hard work, it took a lot of focus, it took a lot of determination to achieve this purpose. Mr. Speaker, I read from the writer that it has taken Tapa over 30 years to test elite football. And it has also taken them about 47 years to achieve this great achievement. I want to use this opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to talk about the fact that you cannot achieve this great thing overnight. So what are we doing as GFA, as a country, to support Colts football, to support women's football, to support Division 1, Division 2, to put in a lot of resources and facilities to help these young potential young people in our constituencies to grow. Mr. Speaker, I must also use this opportunity to commend the President for his visionary leader, leadership to construct sports facilities across the country. Mr. Speaker, <coughs> football is now a big business and congratulations to my good friend, uh, Mr. Parker. I watched the last um, African Cup of Nations uh, club championship between Alali and Wak of Morocco. Alali won the trophy 3 2. And if you look at the quality of play, it should tell you that those countries are investing in their academies. Companies are investing in football and sports in general. That is why Morocco could get to the semi final stage of the last World Cup. If you look at the Senegalese team, it should tell you that some old players are putting money into academies, Patrick Vieira and co. They are putting in big money. What are former national stars doing in Ghana? Everybody is saying government must contribute. Government must contribute. How much can government put in football? Go to the sports village of Mamlodi Sundowns, Pirates, Chiefs, and you think you are somewhere in Europe. If you don't invest in sports, you won't get the results. Alaji Gruza, Kim Faisal, one man, how much can he support Kim Faisal with? So we all, we all have to go back to the drawing table and look at how football is financed and our sports is financed. To... Mr. Speaker, I am happy that our young men here have put in a lot of effort to bring home this medal, and it's, it's an achievement for the whole nation. It's an achievement for us as mothers. It's an achievement for us as fathers. And we want to see them rise higher and higher on, 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 on the game. Mr. Speaker, having said that, I want to make a statement emphatically that our universities must start grooming our young men and women in, in sports. Mr. Speaker, if you go to the Western world now, one of the courses that are challenging and that are more competitive are courses in sports. I want to take the opportunity to thank, uh, to congratulate the team, the management and the GFA for this uh, fit. Mr. Speaker, We've all heard about the woes of Ghana football. And ever so often, we hear people saying, people must put in money, Mr. Speaker. How do you put your money? Who on this planet put your money into a venture when you are told that officiating is problematic? Facilities are problematic. The training regime is not fit for purpose. And there's no clear route as to whether, even if you invest 10 cities, whether you even get your 10 CD back. So, Mr. Speaker, until we have a system where Ghana football gets these issues resolved, it is going to be difficult. It's not as if Ghanaians don't have the ability to uh, invest in football. That is why I take the opportunity to uh, congratulate those who have uh, risked to invest in uh, this venture, especially those who have invested in Mediama, uh, as a result of which this uh, glory is coming.